Listen to the banjo. Oh, 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 the banjo begin playing that. What's up, y'all? Back like I haven't withdrawals. And my draws is clean. I had to say draws because once I said that, then, you know, I just, that's the way my brain works. Uh, what is going on? Uh, big step us. Uh, nothing up with me. Did my little workout today. Chilled, watched some TV. I was watching, like, I, I started watching my Samsung TV just because when it cuts on, it cuts on whatever's on, and I had been watching Brazilis, but it's converted over to Marriage Boot Camp, and it was like some super old episodes, but it was like Kendra Wilkson, who used to be a Playboy Bunny, married to that dude Hank Basket, and they were like having marriage problems because Hank accidentally picked up a transsexual, that's what they said that they are called back then. Today is transgender, but back then they were saying transsexual, and he didn't know, and the transsexual was holding him hostage. It was just the whole thing, but I was like, man, how lucky did he get that he, that, that stuff happened like over 10 years ago, because if that would happen today, he would be, he would have to move and change his name, but yeah, I watched like marathons of that, and that was about it, just got caught up, a lot of stuff, um, the news and back on social media so so much useless information in my brain now and now i'm going to insert it in yours <laughs> anyway so there was a powerful earthquake that rocks taiwan building scene collapse causes tsunami warning in japan which i do have video of that Biden is outraged by the Israeli strike that killed an aid workers in Gaza. They said that that world kitchen that they targeted with their lasers, that kitchen, like, has fed so many people. Um, yeah, as you can see, the next one, grief and anger says workers with Jose Andres think a kitchen were killed in the Israeli airstrike, and they were just there to feed them. Taylor Swift makes history as Forbes officially crowns her a billionaire. Is Kelsey gonna fumble that bag? A suspected space object that damaged Florida home being analyzed by NASA. How much money did these people get from that? check TMZ out real quick. So, Vontae Davis was found in his gyms. They're still not saying the cause of death, but wondering, was he working out or something? Fans rip Jennifer Hudson. We believe you dished share. I don't care enough to read that. Gypsy Rose has a new man. She is breaking up with her husband, getting back with her ex-fiance. They got matching tats. Gypsy just fresh out the joint. So to think that she was going to come out and stay married to one guy, are you crazy? Rashi Rice has now admitted that he was involved in that car crash in Texas. Not good for him. Lizzo had a post that she quit music the other day, but she said no, she was quitting hate. A lot of people are saying she did that because nobody cared. So she came back the next day posting again. All right, let's see what else we got here. This crazy X app. <laughs> Dr-
dramatic helicopter rescue of a man who clung to a North Carolina cliffside after falling off a trail was caught on video. That man was lucky. Um... So here's video of that. Authorities are investigating the suspicious disappearance of two women who never showed up to pick their children up last week. So they're suspecting foul play. Lots of weather alerts going on. Alright, so... Besides this earthquake, there wasn't too many crazy things, but let's see here what I got. Here's the earthquake. She doesn't date men with kids, but starting talking to one with some a month in, she starts inviting him and his kids at some family events. He kept saying no. After a few more invites, he finally told her to stop asking him about his kids. It's no secret that I don't date. This man really told me to stop asking him about his kids because it was getting weird. Like no ninja, what's weird is the fact that you ain't never got your fucking kids. And I know if you can make time to see me, I know you can see them badass kids. Like that girl saying that video, go help that bitch with them kids. It's no secret that I don't date people with children. It's fucking non-negotiable, okay? I like to be able to go as I please. Uh, I'm dating for marriage, and I would like for my person's first child to be my first child. That's just how I live in my head. Met this dude or whatever, y'all. When I say the conversation was so good to the point where I didn't even acknowledge the fact that he had children. I, did, I didn't, didn't care. But the conversation was so good. Almost a month into us talking, I'm like, you know, let me try to invite these little motherfuckers to something. First things first, the fair came around. I'm like, me and my sister plan on taking her kids to the fair. Would you like to join us with your kids? He says, and I quote, they will be with their mom this weekend, maybe next weekend. They gave me the impression that you had your kids at some fucking point. Another weekend came by. Me and my friend was having a picnic. She was begging her kids. And I'm like, you know, we're going to be at Centennial Park. It is okay if you bring your children. Yada, yada, yada. He says, and I quote, my kids aren't going to be here this weekend. And in my mind, I'm thinking, when will they fucking be here? Because at this point, you don't never got your fucking kids. Third and last time, inviting them to something. Invite them to the fucking skate rink. He says, and I quote, stop asking me about those kids. Those kids or your kids? That was like exhibit 9,472 of our I don't fucking date men who have kids because it seems like they only take care of the kids if they still messing with the baby mama, live in the household with the baby mama, or if they're just a good man. And that's fucking never happening. I, I, I rarely see it. So yeah, that was a fucking rap for me. Like, go help that bitch with them kids. And I'm just one of those women, I learn from my surroundings. If you don't take care of that bitch kids, I know if we would have kids, you wouldn't be taking care of mine. So let's just wrap this shit up right here because I can see this. Or it could be that he was not intending to be close with you like that. Like, did you get his intentions? Secondly, everybody don't bring their kids around people right off the bat. You, I gotta really know I'm gonna be with you before you meet my kids. I mean, it's too many. The list is long for her to say she doesn't date men with kids, but she keeps asking him to bring his kids around. I mean, the fact that 
she should be happy he's not doing that because y'all aren't that serious in the game like to be meeting somebody's kids and then what if his baby mama don't want his kids around the women he's dating i mean he must not think you're that important yet it could be that it just seems a little weird that you're kind of obsessing about meaning his kids so this here is a rape x it's an anti-raping device for women you insert it in like a tampon with the applicator and if a man tries to rape you it it, it barbs him so ouch but smart so this is an open discussion it's 6 a.m your spouse is not home no text no call no phone is going to voicemail what are you going to do <laughs> worry myself, child. I, I I gotta get my Z's. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Really? I can't sleep. If if my girl was to be out and she's not answering, and it wouldn't be the fact that I'm worried I can't sleep. I can't sleep because I'm literally trying to hold myself together because I'm about to lose my. Yeah. Shit. No, my somebody, not somebody's bro. about to get hurt. I don't know who it's gonna be. Adrenaline boy. It might be the person who tries to cut me off when I try to pull up of where you said you were, right? <laughs> but somebody's about to get this because, like, for me, you know what it is? It has nothing to do about the jealousy part is what you said. Mm-hmm. I can't tolerate a level of disrespect and inconsideration. It literally goes so far. Like, it gets to a point where I start making not, it bigger. Not glasses. Yeah, yeah. I make it bigger. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, oh, you don't respect me? He's going to start tapping his foot just oh, now. You, oh, you think I'm a it's like, oh, you think you can play me? <laughs> oh, Come on, Rico. Do oh, you think you can just, oh, you think you can just <laughs> do whatever you want to do? Oh, you think you can just do whatever you want to do? Okay. Hey, you got me f***ed up. And, and I think... And, and <laughs> That's hilarious. That's exactly how I'm going to respond. I can't... Innocent. But the thing is, I'm, I'm very expressive, right? And sometimes when I'm trying to hold myself together... It's the worst thing to do because that's where a real bomb is made, right? If I at least get to express myself and, and just be able to get it out, I can just cool down and I won't give a f- So if you have to come home at 10 a.m. and explain to me why your phone is off all night and why you didn't go ahead and get yourself a charger, why it wasn't a priority for you to figure out how you can get into contact with me to make sure that you were okay and you just pop up and you smile in my face. Like ain't shit happen. Like ain't sh- yeah, I mean, for me, if my spouse was missing, I would, one, I'd be worried. I'd make sure I'd check the news, like the little news blipper, beeper thing, just to see if anything happened. Um, I'd be worried for sure, but if it, then I'd be like, it would be a point where I'd be like, my husband better be dead. He better be dead or laid up in a coma somewhere, you know, because when he come home, he's dead either way but yeah i I would give him the benefit of the doubt at first so i I would definitely be worried but then once i knew he was okay he might as well go ahead and and check on out so this girl shared with her co-worker where she had just moved and the co-worker sent a man who works at the complex her picture without her permission then the man was waiting on her when she got home so that's creepy most nursing facilities, you're not allowed to take pictures, so keep that in mind while I tell you the story. So POV, about a week ago, I told one of my co-workers that I had moved into a new place or whatever, and I told her where it was. So this girl tells me that she knows the maintenance man that works out there. I said, okay, cool, in the conversation. Never, never said anything about it, moved on. So the other day, literally, I get out of my car at my at my complex i get out and there is a man standing outside of my car and said are you monica and i'm like what like he's like oh emily told me about you then this man proceeds to say i asked her if you were pretty so she snapped me a photo of you and then i was like oh yeah you're pretty so not only did this bitch tell this old crusty ass man that where I lived, where I was, she sent him a photo of me. One of my co-workers sent some maintenance man a photo of me to confirm whether or not I was pretty at my job. And I had no idea that she fucking did this. She literally just sent this random ass man. So now he knows what car I drive, where I work, where I live, all of the above. 
all from having one simple conversation with this girl about me moving into my new place. I get to my job this morning and I confronted her about it. And it's like, everybody is, I don't know why people are defending her. She put my safety at risk. Now, I found out that this is basically her sugar daddy and that she hangs out with him. And she's 22. He like 60 something years old. And she hangs out with him. So that, and she said that she was basically doing me a favor. And I'm like, girl, he's contracted to fix my place if something's wrong with it. There was no reason for you to send him a picture of me to confirm whether or not if I was pretty. So this man is standing outside when I pull up to my complex. Uh, he's standing outside. I hop out. He's like, are you my? like, what? Like, why does this man know who I am? And then when I confront her about it, you know what she says? Like, everybody who's an aide knows that you're not allowed to take pictures in the facility. She said, oh, I only took a picture of the back of your head. How the fuck would he know what I look like if you only took a picture of the back of my head? My job is doing absolutely nothing about it, and I left work today because I, I was so angry. Like, I was literally going to fuck off on this girl because she jeopardized my safety because I'm like, dude, now some random ass man knows where I live, knows what I look like, knows what kind of car I drive, and knows where I work, all because you wanted to run your mouth to your fucking sugar day or whoever he is. He's some crusty old looking dude. Emily would be fighting, but the job should definitely do something about that, because that's against all kind of code of conduct, but that's why you don't tell people your business. I will give people a vicinity of where I live, but to be like, I live at this place, no. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That was the guy that rammed the FBI gate the other day. Alright, let's see what else we got here. So, North Carolina State University closes Poe Hall building after 150 cancer cases are linked back to the building, which is crazy. Um, had high levels of uh, polychlorinated cancer-causing chemical. The U.S. placed a ban on this da dangerous toxin in 1979, but the building was built in 71. The school shut down in t November 23. So, gonna be some lawsuits going on. Atlanta is ranking third in new HIV uh, infections nationwide. Not shocking. The national average. Health officials point to stigmas around the virus and access to care as ongoing issues contributing to those high numbers. The CDC's most recent data on new cases of HIV paints a startling picture of an ongoing health crisis in the Southeast. We've seen that HIV is growing in the South and Atlanta... Not shocking. Um, and they don't, people just really don't even preach safe sex no more. People just be out here just doing whatever. It's really sad. Um, let's see. Let's, I'm, I have like a lot of story times that I wanted to get to, but we'll read a couple of Reddits. degree if you're making over sixty thousand dollars annually how did you get there let me find out just been here a while i'm a letter carrier for the post office with a ged making seventy thousand before taxes this is working 43 hours a week could make ninety thousand if i were to sign up for overtime but i value family yeah the postal service got some good decent things guy that remodeled my bathroom said he makes around 130 yeah contractors for sure trade jobs yeah if you get a trade job for sure
programming, learn SQL and C+. Most of my success comes from technical aspects of the job. Union blue collar jobs, IT certifications, there you have it. What is the most shocking habit you discovered when you moved in with a partner? That my partner has, I'm assuming. Uh, my husband loves to snack before he goes to bed. He loves fruit. Like, he loves fruit before he goes to bed. I will list his most embarrassing one. She sprints up and down the stairs. She just hates being on the stairs, so she makes it as fast as possible. I'm like that, too. I hate when people go upstairs slow. I gotta go up fast, like it's a fire. I don't like creeping upstairs. I think it's just, I don't like it. It drives me insane. He won't clear the couch. He just sits down, fresh folded. He, so he's just sitting on anything. He likes to tear holes in the sheets with his toenails. Dang. <laughs> His toenails are sharp. Somebody said he's masturbating in a garbage can. Eating cereal and water and not milk. That's crazy. My significant other eats cereal with orange juice. That's crazy. I didn't been with it then with him, but I just stayed there a lot and cleaned up his mess a lot of times. But he had pee bottles under the bed, and I don't know why I didn't leave the moment I discovered it. Yes. Although young guys, that sounds like something he did as a young guy, and he just never got over it. What's the sad reality of being an adult that young people should be prepared about? That mommy and daddy is not coming to save you. They don't. They they can't. The number of people who honestly care about you will drastically lower and can easily end up being just yourself. You get laid off or for not doing anything wrong, then you're left with nothing. Adults aren't as together mature as you thought they were. Having to figure out what to have for dinner every single night. You will soon become obsessed with closing doors and turning off lights. I'm, a, I'm very obsessed with turning off lights. You can do everything right and still be unhappy. Never gonna run out of dishes to wash. That's so true. You need fresh dishwater every time. Back pain. So he said, start doing yoga and stretching now. The monotony of everyday life can be so sucking at times. Get ready for the nine to five grind and endless cycles of work, eat, sleep, repeat. Bills. Yeah. Adulthood. Isn't it fun? All right, let me read a couple of Emma the A-holes. for calling the police on my niece and not telling my sister beforehand. I'm, a 24, I'm 24 and I have a sister who's 35 who has a 16-year-old daughter. Her daughter has started rebelling and being a teenager. By being a teenager, I don't mean stealing, I mean now the yada yada. But recently, she's gotten sticky fingers. She's been banned from the mall in our neighborhood. She was suspended from school for taking a girl's phone. And she's even tried to pawn her mother's wedding ring. I don't like my niece in my house for this reason. I have worked too hard for things to be stolen. Two weeks ago, I noticed the patio door was unlocked, and I make sure I lock all my doors before I leave. My fiancé suggested we get cameras so we can put them up in our house. Last week on Wednesday, my fiancé and I went to go look at the wedding venues, and we were gone all day. When we got back, I only had to unlock the bottom lock to get to the house, so we checked the cameras, and sure enough, my niece and her friends somehow picked the lock to the window, and she was in our house for hours with two guys, and they took some 
some money from my purse, took two of my fiance's Rolexes, and also took my grandmother's wedding ring that she left for me when she passed away last year from cancer. They were eating snacks, watching TV, so she was just kicking it. I called my sister and told her what happened and told her my niece had two days to give me everything back or I'd call the police, and she said she would handle it. Thursday comes around nothing, Friday comes around nothing, so I called the police, showed them the video, filed a report. I got a call later from my sister crying and screaming that I should have told her beforehand. I told her I gave her two days. Anyway, no, you're not the a-hole at all. Um, somebody said, oh, for crying out loud, you don't have kids, so you don't understand what's not to understand. She broke into your house with two accomplices, not the a-hole, but your sister and your mother are a-holes big time. Your niece should have some serious issues and she needs to understand. Yeah, that's beyond being a teenager because my nieces would never, but yeah. I wouldn't even give her two days. I would have given her till that morning. So since I got so many story times, I'm just going to go ahead and hop in them. Well, I don't want to play for y'all. Y'all. Okay, y'all. So I'm going to do a story time on how I got caught at my sleep counts. But I wouldn't say I got caught, but I did. I just didn't reveal myself. Okay, so boom, I was talking to this boy or whatever. We had number to talk for a minute. And he was like, okay, come over, da 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 So, I came over. Okay, so boom, when I got there, first red flag was he was standing outside and he had the garage halfway open. So, when he had the garage halfway open, I'm like, okay, boom, that's nothing new. Like, it's just another way inside the house. So, boom, I had to kneel down like duck to get inside the garage so boom i get inside the garage he like oh you gotta be quiet because my auntie here and she do too much and da 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 so i'm like um okay so meanwhile he's telling me that we're walking to the garage door that enters inside the house as we get to the door he's talking again he's like you gotta duck down so i'm like okay so i start to duck down as he's grabbing the knob of the door as he's grabbing the knob of the door the knob of the door is already moving so as this moving i'm like stuck like i'm fucking shook like he shook i'm shook. we looking at each other he like go 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 duck down now mind you it's a car in the garage so i duck down behind the car well, it wasn't behind the car. It was on the side of the car. As I'm ducking down the side of the car, the aunt opened the door. She's like, oh, um, what the fuck is you doing? He was like, oh, nothing. I'm just smoking. I'm just smoking. I'm just smoking. So I'm just like, oh, my fucking God. Like, what am I about to do? Like, she's about to see me. So I'm ducking down. And as they're talking, they're literally having a whole fucking conversation. I'm ducking down. And, like... I crawl to the front of the car. The front of the car is like smudged between the front of the car and the actual garage door. So I cry right there and I'm just hiding. Like, something tell me to record. So I'm recording a little bit of it. So, boom. Next thing you know, she's just talking. He's faking like he's smoking. Da 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 da. So, boom. She go back inside. She gets on the phone. She, was, she gets on the phone and he's like, oh, we're going to have to wait a little minute until she laid out. So she, I guess she's on the phone in the living room and she lays down. As she's laying down, he's going inside to like see what she's doing. So I guess she finally gets comfortable. She lays down in the living room on the floor, make a little pallet or whatever the case may be. So he's like, okay, come in, but you got to crawl. So I get in, I'm crawling. First, I crawl through the kitchen. And as I'm crawling through the kitchen, I'm crawling through the fucking dining room. Now I'm crawling, mind you, I'm crawling, I'm creeping like TLC, I'm creeping. As I'm creeping, next thing you know, I see a glimpse of Amy because she's in her phone. Like I can see the light flashing on her face, on her phone, because it's dark. So, she, I see a glimpse, like, at me, or as I thought, and I'm like, fuck it, she just seen me. So I'm like, hmm, let me might as well just stand up. So I thought she seen me, so, and she ain't saying nothing, so I just stood up and I just... Walked straight to his room. He like, go right there. She was like, 
Next thing you know, as I get in this room, I hear a voice say, who the fuck was that? And I look, and he like, go get under the bed, get under the bed. So I heard I squeeze up under the fucking bed like a fucking dummy. I squeeze up under the bed. She was like, who the fuck was that? Who the fuck was that? He was like, oh, that was nobody, nobody. That was nobody. You just seeing stuff. So he convinced her that she didn't see anybody and she's a fucking dumbass she believes it and she leaves out so i'm still up under the bed next thing you know i'm up under the bed i come from up under the bed when she leave i'm looking around the room i'm peeping the scenery out girl the fucking doorknob is off the mama done took the motherfucking doorknob off Next thing you know, the motherfucking window is fucking screwed shut. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on in here? So I'm like, oh shit, I gotta get the fuck up out of here. As me and him just talking, have a conversation, the auntie here, she was like, who the fuck is in here? So he puts a pin through the actual knob door to stick inside the wall so it can like lock. I don't know how he did it. It's like some type of nigger rig shit. So as he do that, he hear the auntie coming, so he's like, get up on the bed, get up on the bed. Now, mind you, we wasn't out of the bed. I was, like, on the side of the bed, laying down between the bed and the wall. It was like a little crack. So I was laying down. He's like, get up on the bed, get up on the bed. So I get up on the bed. The auntie come back in. She's like, you know your fucking mama crazy. I can hear you talk to somebody. He was like, oh, nothing. I was on the phone. So I'm like, okay, boom. I'm high and up under the bed. I'm just, I'm just like, I got to get the fuck up out of here. The aunt leaves, and we're on the side of the bed. We do the do whatever on the side of the fucking bed. We do the do, and he's like, oh, you going to have to stay in here until my auntie go to sleep. So I'm laying down on the side of the fucking bed for damn near two fucking hours until the bitch go to sleep. So she goes to sleep. I walks out, and I leaves, and I never come to the fuck back, bitch. Boy. That better have been really good for you to be doing all that. That's just too much. Don't let my head distract you for this story I'm about to tell. I'm going to get my hair done. But anyway, so let me tell y'all about this party from hell. So for those who don't know, I am a dancer. Yes, I shake my ass for cash. And today is Monday, and on Saturday, I had a party. So a little backstory. The girl who hit me up to do a party... She is a girl that I previously danced with. Everything was fine. Like, I did a party with her before. Everything was cool. We made a check. We went home. Good day. Good la day. So she hit me up about a month later on, like, a Wednesday and said, hey, boo, I need you for Saturday. I'm like, cool. So I'm assuming that I'm doing the party with her. So fast forward to Saturday morning, I get a FaceTime call from this dude I'm cool with at the club. He FaceTimes me with, like, two other dudes or whatever, and he basically like, Suki, these are the dudes that you, you're going to be doing a party for. It's going to be you, so-and-so, and so-and-so. So I'm like, huh? I thought I was doing a party with the other girl. We going to name her K. I thought I was doing a party with K. I didn't know I was doing a party with so-and-so and so-and-so. But I'm cool with so-and-so and so-and-so, so I wasn't really tripping. Only thing I was tripping about is, where is K? Even though I found out that K wasn't going to be dancing, I was still okay with doing a party because I'm cool with so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I love them. And I'm also hella cool with the dude from the club. So, you know, I feel comfortable because it's going to be people that, that I know, you know, and I'm cool with. But still, after that FaceTime call, I called K. And I'm basically like, K, so I thought that you was going to be dancing a lot. And she like, nah, I ain't going to be dancing, but they cool people's. And I'm a beater. So I'm like, okay. So a few hours later, she sent me the address and the time. I realized that the address was an hour away from where I lived. But usually when I do parties, we make a check. We at least make $1,000 or better a piece. Not including the upfront fee. And the upfront fee is basically the fee that you pay the dancers before we even get dressed or anything. Basically, as soon as we get there, some send them like through Cash App and stuff like that a couple days before or the day of. Or if you don't got Cash App, you just give us cash as soon as we get there. So me being me, I asked my man, should I do this party? Simply because that drive was real far and I'm a woman all by myself going an hour away with cash on me. And I drive a foreign car and baby gas is not cheap. But he basically was like, yeah, just make sure you send me your location and stuff like that. And if you want me to go with you and at least sit outside, I'm weak. So I'm like, okay, cool. I started getting ready and everything. And But I let Kay know that I'm going to be a little late because I did live an hour away. And I'm assuming that it was going to be in our city, but it wasn't in our city. So she was like, okay, cool. Just go ahead. 
So I called Kate and she didn't answer. And so I texted her. And after I texted her, I also texted so and so and so and so. And I also FaceTimed the dude who I'm cool with from the club who basically told me that these is his people and stuff like that and that we was good. But he didn't answer neither. So about 10, 15 minutes had went by and then I called my man and I'm basically like, look, should I leave and stuff like that? Because what's going on? He like, hell yeah, you should leave. But call dude who you cool with from the club first and see what's going on. So I told him that I already had called everybody and nobody answered. So while I was on the phone with my man, the dude from the club who I'm cool with ended up calling back and was basically like, hey, let me call them real quick and see where they at and I'm gonna call you right back. And I'm like, okay, cool. So while he was doing that, so-and-so and so-and-so ended up texting me back and telling me that they was on their way. At that point, I was cool and waiting for them to pull up. So after about 25, 30 minutes, everybody pulled up and everything was cool. So we all walk in and dude from the club who I'm cool with, he wasn't there, even though I really wanted him to be there so that I could feel comfortable. Yeah, I'm really a shy person and stuff like this. So I like being around people I know and that I feel safer with. But I was there with so and so and so and so, so I was okay. And K wasn't there either. So we walk in, everything okay. The birthday guy, nice. Everybody there, super sweet. Everybody was nice. We got out up front as soon as we walked in, so everything was going good. It was only about six people there when we got there, but the birthday dude and everybody there was actually telling us, hey, the people with the money is going to come in a minute. Like, they like an hour away or 30 minutes away and stuff like that. But everybody got money and stuff like that, so y'all going to be good and y'all going to make it back tonight. So everybody was just basically telling us that we was going to make a check tonight and stuff like that. Cool. I love to hear those words when I'm doing a party. I love to make a bag. So a couple minutes later, dude... Who I did a party with before with K, he ended up walking in. So I got happy because I'm like, okay, I did a party with him before and we made a check. So I'm thinking, okay, we about to make a check for that. He come up and greet all of us. He's super sweet as us did. We want anything drinking. Was we okay and things like that? We're going to call him Albert. <laughs> so Albert was super cool. He was like, I'm happy to see you again. And so like I'm like, I'm happy to see you too. Like, you just don't know. I'm happy to see you. Because mind you, at this point, it's like seven people there. He made it seven. So I'm like, okay, where's the other people that they said was going to come? But y'all know me, I don't really worry about a crowd. I don't care if it's one person, two people, or whatever, as long as you got that money on you. Because it could be a room full of people and no money. So I'm happy with well. Then the girlfriend of the birthday boy, she ends up coming upstairs before we get dressed and basically had like a little tip jar with like ribbons on it and stuff like that. And we're basically like, do y'all got anything for the birthday boy and stuff like that? So me and so-and-so and so-and-so is looking at each other and we like, do we got anything for the birthday boy? Like, we here to make some money, so. And we think to ourselves like, we here so he could pay us to dance for him for his birthday. So I'm confused, but I digress. So we basically told her, we don't got no money on us right now, even though we did get out of front. Who about to give out of front to somebody that just gave it to us? He just gave us our up front. So why would we give it back to him for his birthday? So we basically told her, we don't got no cash on us right now, like no money on us. And she was basically like, y'all got something. Y'all got something. That's why you know we don't like sweet cakes. I'm here to make some money. So why would I give it away? So she said, okay, and just went back downstairs with her little tip jar. So we all think it. If we make a bag, of course we're going to tip his birthday jar. Why wouldn't we, you know? But we want to wait till the end of the night. Why would we tip before we even know how much money we going to make? It don't make it sense, okay? So another dude comes upstairs and basically like, do y'all got any ones? And we like, no. Mind y'all, we all stay far as hell. And we basically like, no, we ain't got no ones. Like, if y'all need a one, y'all should have told us before we came because we got ones at home but y'all should have let us know before we came so that we were happy so i laughed it off and i'm like it looked like that y'all finna be throwing big bills because if y'all don't got no ones and y'all only got big bills what do y'all think y'all finna throw y'all gonna throw them big bills but dude who came upstairs and asked us that he had about a hundred and something ones up in his hand and the birthday boy had like a hundred ones as well in his hand so we all looking at each other like i hope this is not all the ones that we finna get 200 i know this is not all the money so dude was basically like okay are we gonna do is uh recycle cool recycling is basically where like after all the ones been thrown we pick it up count it exchange it for big bills from them and they get ones again and do it all over again we basically keep doing it until they done throwing all their money so we got up there and danced or whatever everything was cool the 200 dollars got thrown fast because it's only 200 dollars and it was like six or seven dudes so it wasn't gonna last for a long time so after about 10 minutes the 200 ones was gone, even though I feel like it don't even take 10 minutes 
to throw 200 runs from seven dudes. So we counted all the money up and we exchanged it for Big Bill. So they threw the 200 runs over again. And then after they was done throwing that, we heard the birthday boys say, all right, it's time to go. Like, we have fun. Now we're going to go to the, uh, to the club. And me and so-and-so and so-and-so, and we all look at each other like, the club, like, the party over, like, is this all the money? Like, we drove an hour away for this? Well, I drove an hour away. I don't know how long they drive, but I know for a fact it was more than 30 minutes. But I'm like, is this all the money? So we end up making $235 a piece, not including our old friend. So as we should be, me and so-and-so and so-and-so, we all irritated and we like, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. Mind you Albert didn't throw no money like I thought he was, which I wasn't tripping about because it wasn't his party. But it was like, dang, I was kind of banking on Albert. So while we all upstairs getting dressed and we kind of irritated, Albert came up there and basically was like, damn, I'm sorry that the party was trash. You know, like, I thought that they was going to throw some money. So, you know, and I'm basically telling Albert, like, yeah, like, we made a check at your party. Like, I don't know. What this was in out of nowhere, and they hit it a moment. The birthday dude girlfriend comes back upstairs again with that same tip jar. Like, do y'all got anything for the birthday boy? Do y'all got anything for the birthday boy? And, and we looking at her like, is you dumb or is you dumb? Like, why would you think we would have something for the birthday boy if we didn't even make nothing ourselves? Like, stop having parties if y'all can't afford to dance. Like, no tea, no shade. Just stop. And yes, from now on, I'm raising my upfront fee. Simple. So anyway, I come home, I'm irritated. I tell my boyfriend what happened and blah, blah, blah. I go to flip and went back up and I get a text message from Kay in the morning and she basically was like, you can cash at me. So I text her back and I'm like, huh? She was like, 15% tip out I told you about last time. Out of the three years that I've done parties, I have never in my life ever paid another bitch 15% of my money because she told me about a party. Baby, if you're not dancing, you're not getting nothing. So I told her, don't put me on no more parties, but thinking you're a pimp is insane. What? The, what? The geometry? I never knew strippers have to do this much math. Little one, one. This for the suburbia hoes, even though I don't like y'all. Since y'all gonna be all in the hood um, for summertime because y'all wanna be able to fun it, I got tips and tricks to keep your ass safe so you won't be get abducted and be somewhere in uh, Ecuador or some shit. If you ain't see the blunt get rolled, bitch, don't smoke it. You you trying to be cool. You trying to impress that hood motherfucker that you like. So you just gonna smoke anything a motherfucker hand you. Bitch, if you ain't see the motherfucker get rolled, bitch, don't don't take no puffs, don't take no pulls off that bitch. It's the quickest way to be a junkie. Some motherfuckers really don't fuck with you, and they would rather they, they don't wanna they don't wanna kill you. But what they will do is they'll get you hooked on some shit. And now you some fucking 23-year-old hooked on crack. You hooked on crack in 2024. Shame on you, bitch. If if you ain't if you won't deal when they open that bottle up, you better not take a drink or nothing. You better not take a drink or nothing. This it's the same same thing with the smoking, same thing with the drinking. Don't drink anything a motherfucker just hand you. But no, 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 no. Y'all just think, oh, well, I know them. They cool. We vibing. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all want to y'all wanna be where the fun at. You know what I'm saying? The suburb hoes. Y'all want to be where the fun at. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to be around the hood, motherfuckers. Don't drink some shit. You ain't, if you ain't see the bottle get open, if you ain't see the bottle get popped open, don't drink it, bitch. You hear these words right here from a motherfucker. Oh, these motherfuckers trip. I'm finna get up out of here. That's your, that's your sign to get up out of here. Not when motherfuckers start running. When the shit start popping off. Because if you don't get shot, you might get trapped. Motherfuckers might step all over you. And you could die like that. If you hear a motherfucker start walking, hey, I'm finna leave. These motherfuckers tripping. I'm finna get the fuck up out of here. That's your cue to go. He knows something or she knows something that you don't know. If motherfuckers, like, hey, these motherfuckers is tripping, best believe those motherfuckers is finna start tripping. If there's more guys than girls at the party, now, if there's, if, if the guys outnumber the girls, it's best for you to be an individual and get the fuck up out of there. Because I don't know what it is. Once motherfuckers start getting drunk, they start acting weird. I'm just saying, Mike, get the fuck up out of there. If, if your homegirl bring you to a place and she say, oh, I know these people, but when she get in there, she don't know nobody, leave. She, she just she just a gullible hoe. She just trying to be with a fun at, and that might cost you your life. 
leave, bitch. Now, if you a pretty girl, you walk in and motherfuckers start tripping. Say, for instance, you walk, you walk past a group of motherfuckers, and there's one dude that all of a sudden he start flashing his pistol and he start putting his homeboys in headlocks. You might want to get up out of there. Some shit finna go down. I don't know what it is about pretty girls, but a lot of hood dudes, bro, they just cannot hold all that in. They try to be Mr. Macho Man, so now they gotta show that they the alpha. So they start trying to play with their homeboys and all that shit. And sometimes that shit can turn left. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as motherfuckers start doing the most, go ahead and get the fuck about it. If the party flies say leave all that drama at home, you make sure that you leave your ass at home. Because best believe they're going to bring all the drama to that goddamn party. And last but not least, every dude you meet is not a hood dude. Some of those dudes are just weirdos with guns. they just weirdos. They're just pedophiles with weapons. So be careful who you mingle with, who you be meeting online, and they invite you over. Ask around, do you know this dude? Motherfuckers gonna tell you who bruh is. But some of these dudes, like us, let me say it again, a lot of these dudes are not hood motherfuckers, they not no street motherfuckers, they just weirdos with guns. I'm telling you, keep it, like, stay, you know, ask around, ask who bruh is, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of just, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of dirty motherfuckers with high peasies, high points, that portray gangster, you know what I'm saying? If he got a high peasy and he dirty, you shouldn't be going to no kickback with him. You ain't got no business being over there with him.
Wonderful day. I'll be praying for y'all. Y'all pray for me.